Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. My name is Greg and today's video is going to be a short one. It is April 21st, 2018. It's spring cleaning day according to my wife. So she's given me a very limited amount of time to make a video. I wasn't even really planning on making one today, but I did get a brand new watch band in yesterday. So I want to do a quick unboxing um, or un enveloping, an enveloping, an unenveloping of a new watch band and uh, a quick tabletop review. Some of you may have seen the review I did on my Certina DS First Ceramic a month or two ago. At the time I was planning on selling it on eBay, but my wife took pity on me and gave it to me for my birthday, so I get to keep it. But as I've already pointed out, it's getting to be pretty warm outside. And while this dressy leather band, which Certina did a really nice job on, is beautiful and it, it looks great when you're dressed up, it's not great for leather. just generally doesn't do well with water and sweat and things like that. And this is, although it's rather dressy and very attractive, it is, in fact, a dive watch. It's a sport watch. So I decided to uh, go with something different for the summertime, and I ended up buying my first Perlon watch strap manufactured by Hewlett. Back around the time, and this is sort of a traditionally styled dive watch, so back around the time that the dive watch first became popular in the 1950s and 60s, you saw the advent of the, uh, uh, of the Rolex Submariner and the, uh, the Blanc Pound 50 Fathoms and the Zodiac Seawolf and people like... Um, Picard, I can't remember his first name, who took the uh, the bathyscaphe down to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, and other real people like um, Jacques Cousteau were very popular. You had television shows like Sea Hunt, and uh, movies like, uh, what was the James Bond movie with all the scuba diving? Thunderball were very popular. The only thing that was more popular at the time than, or almost as popular at the time as Space exploration was undersea exploration, and dive watches became very popular and remain very popular today. But um, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, you basically either had a leather strap on a watch, there were some canvas straps, cotton canvas straps, neither of those was particularly good for contact with water. There were bracelets, but the bracelets of the time were pretty fragile. They were usually affairs that were bent up out of pieces of sheet metal that could stretch and break. Um, so people came up with a bunch of different sort of ingenious um, new technologies. There were a lot of new materials to work with. Um, tropic rubber straps were very popular in the 1960s and 70s. And uh, other synthetic materials like nylon. You saw the proliferation of uh, Zulu straps and and NATO type straps and, and just plain pull through nylon straps became popular and as we all know from freeze framing Goldfinger, VHS copies of Goldfinger when we were kids we were trying to figure out what was that weird strap that uh, James Bond had on his Rolex so nylon was becoming popular and uh, Perlon was another one that came along, another synthetic material Perlon similar to nylon but it's actually a woven material and it's made I think from polyester. I think it's woven Dacron as opposed to nylon. But um, but the progenitors, the developers of Perlon, a German company called Hewlett, uh, are still considered to be the manufacturers of the best Perlon straps and that's what I ended up buying here. Um, the last couple of straps I've reviewed were both made in China. Um, I had one from uh, Barton and one from Wotsai, I think that's how you pronounce the name. And they came packaged in these attractive um, boxes with nice graphic design on the outside of them. Nothing fancy, but still a fairly nice presentation. The German band came in a Ziploc bag. Um, not unlike the, uh, the type you would get if you bought weed at the arcade in the mall. And the spring bars are in an even smaller uh, 
plastic Ziploc bag like you might get other illicit substances in, but uh, I'm not keeping myself under a mountain of crippling debt by supporting a, an expensive box habit. Uh, my self-destructive habit is what's inside the boxes, so the packaging really doesn't matter. Uh, we'll go over and take a look at this Perlon strap on the tabletop in a moment, but of course before we do, let's do the obligatory wristwatch check and it's nothing special. It's my F91W. Um, I talked at great length about this last week and I'm sure nobody wants to hear any more about it. So, without any further ado, uh, let's go look at this Hewlett Perlon strap. Alright guys, so here it is. I'm not going to drag this out any longer than absolutely necessary. Um, as I've already pointed out, it uh, just came in a little plastic uh, Ziploc bag here. There's the watch band. A little card from the company that sold the watch. I bought it through Amazon, but it came from Holbins. Um, there's another tiny little Ziploc in here with uh, some substantial looking spring bars. I don't know if those are also from Hewlett, made in Germany or not, but they look, they look pretty nice. Um, there's the watch band. Uh, as you can see, it's made of a woven material. Uh, I believe it's woven Dacron. I don't think it's nylon. As I pointed out before, I've never had a Perlon strap before. It just has a little sleeve over it. Um, giving it size and where it was made in Germany there. I was kind of expecting Perlon to be soft and supple like like a nylon NATO. These come out of the packages. This is a good one, a Maritac. They tend to be quite soft and comfortable right out of the package. The Perlon strap is actually quite stiff. Uh, as you can see here. Um, it is woven out of this, I believe, polyester material. Uh, but then it has been heated, or I think it's been heated. I think they do this thermally. It's kind of been ironed uh, to fuse a lot of the fibers together on the back. Now, I'm led to believe that... Um, this will break in pretty quickly, particularly when you get it wet. Um, this has a tendency to form itself to your wrist. Uh, the reason they do this, as far as I can tell, as you can see, there's no holes um, for the, uh, the prong on the buckle to go through. You just kind of find a natural hole in the weave, uh, which is one nice thing about these watches. As you can see, you can see right through them. They're pretty breathable. Uh, and they're infinitely sizable. Anywhere you can get that prong to go through the weave, you can make your watch band exactly the length that you need it to be. Um, the problem with that, and it, it, what happens with some cheaper Perlon bands, is when you press through one of these spaces, if all of the various fibers haven't been thermally uh, kind of welded together, as they've clearly done with this one, uh, the hole that you make with the prong on your on your watch buckle will start to expand as you wear the watch um, the hole will get kind of expanded and you'll end up with a big nasty ugly hole in your Perlon strap that apparently doesn't happen with Ulets, uh, but I don't have any experience with Perlon straps at all and I certainly don't have any experience with anything other than Ulet this is the first one I've ever had it does look pretty nice the stitching is substantial um, I think that it's going to look very good on the Certina. Oh, it's the wrong side, but I think it'll look quite good on the Certina for summertime. I will be doing a review, uh, a more in-depth review of the band, and uh, and now the watch, now that I get to keep it. Uh, I went with a two-piece strap here. Uh, this will use the traditional spring bars. There are Perlon straps that just pass through in much the same way as a Zulu or NATO band. The problem with NATOs is this section of the fabric right here, and you can actually see the case back of the last watch I wore this strap with sort of 
permanently embedded in the watch band. The problem with these is the nylon is softer uh, than the stainless steel of the watch case, but it is directly in contact with the case back of the watch. And when you're wearing this in the summertime and you're getting dust or sand at the beach and sweat and seawater or pool water or whatever else in there, uh, you get this sort of abrasive compound built up on the uh, inside surface of the watch band here that's directly in contact with your case back. And it can really cause some serious scratching and scuffing and actually the print, the, uh, the weave of the material uh, is supposed to be specific, uh, especially noticeable with Perlon because of this weave. You'll actually get a pattern on the back of your case watch uh, from the abrasive stuff that's built up in the band. So I love this case back. It's one of my favorite features of this watch and I really, really don't want to get it all scuffed up. So I decided to go with a two-piece band using uh, standard spring bars. I know that Zulus and NATOs are really popular right now. They have been for about the last 10 years or so, uh, but I really kind of wore out my affinity for these uh, type of pull-through straps, even just the plain nylon cheapy pull-throughs that you can get at uh, the drugstore. Uh, I tried using all of these in the past, and uh, I really don't like what they do to the um, case back. I think a lot of people have made some valid points about how they put excessive uh, force on the spring bars. They are quite secure. If one of your spring bars gives loose and the other holds, your watch won't fall to the ground. But um, I believe you actually have a much better chance of one of the spring bars giving loose because of the, the unique um, physics of this type of watch band. So I just don't really use these anymore. Um, I know that they're popular. I don't fault anyone else for using them. They do have a kind of a cool military factor because some of them, especially those made by Phoenix in the UK, have actually been used in military applications. Um, but I'm just kind of worn out on NATOs. So uh, we're going with a two-piece band here. And again, I went with the, uh, the primary contractor. Um, so I'll fit this up and I'll wear it for a couple of uh, months and we'll take a look at how it looks in uh, two months or so. And I'll be able to give you a little bit better review of how the Certina is holding up as well. Uh, I don't want to stretch this out any longer. My wife is probably pacing the hallway downstairs waiting for me to come down and help her start cleaning out the cupboard. So without any further ado, let's go back over to the bookshelves and wrap this up. Oh, wait, before we do, let's take a look at the other half of the band really quick. Uh, since that's what you guys tuned in here for. Um, the keeper strap is also uh, woven out of purlon. It looks like it's just melted together there. And um, the buckle is nice, substantial, stainless steel. Uh, it's signed Hewlett here, so that's attractive. It does have a folded uh, metal prong as opposed to a solid one. Uh, I don't know if that matters to you or not. It doesn't to me. I've never had one of these go bad, so it does look very nice. Uh, we'll see. I'm gonna. In I'm interested to see how uh, comfortable it is. It is quite thin. I know it will be quite breathable, but uh, I've heard that these can take a little while to break in. But uh, all right, now let's go over to the bookshelves. So there you have it, guys. That's the Ulet Palma Pacifica two-piece Perlon strap in black. Um, I don't know if there's much more I can say about it. Uh, I will review it more thoroughly in the future to see how it holds up. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be doing an actual review of the Certina DS for a ceramic, which I didn't originally think I was going to be able to do. So that'll be coming up in the next few months, and we'll get a chance, uh, since we're just at the beginning of summertime now, and it's just getting nice outdoors, I anticipate leaving this strap on the watch for at least four or five months. Uh, maybe longer, so we'll get a chance to see just how it holds up under some actual use. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you hated it, go ahead and click the dislike button. You will not hurt my feelings. But one thing that is very important, to me at least, 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. It only takes a moment. It takes one click of your mouse or a stab at your screen to do so. It doesn't cost you a dime and it'll go a long way to keeping me here on YouTube. Um, Facebook has changed the rules. They've clearly made some people kind of angry. It's not about total views of your videos anymore. Every time you watch my video, that's great, but it doesn't really account for anything in YouTube's book. It makes me feel better, but YouTube only cares about subscribers. And if you're already a subscriber, go ahead and click the little bell icon down below. What that'll do is YouTube will send you notifications when I update my channel. So when I post my next video, I hope to see all of you here again next time. Later, guys.